In the previous video lecture, we collapsed our ASVs at the lowest taxonomic annotation for use downstream with the tax glom function, and we also filtered that phyloseq object just to get rid of really low level OTUs that we're not interested in looking at. So now we're going to do our beta diversity plot, our ordination, and we're going to use non metric multi dimensional scaling for this and we're going to select Bray Curtis distance. So we can use the ordinate function. And that's also from the phyloseq package. And the first parameter again is a phyloseq object. And then after that, you can select the method you want to use. So you'll see there are a number we discussed PCOA um, and NMDS. And here you'll see MDS and PCOA are the same thing, like we discussed. If you scroll here, you'll see you can specify either, but it gives you the same result. But in this case, we're going to focus on the non-metric multidimensional scaling. Um, other thing that we need to specify for our, our parameters is K. So that's the number of dimensions you want to use that um, by default is 2 and you can also adjust that k parameter and uh, you might may have to if you um, you don't find a convergent solution so in that case you could maybe make k3 and see if that solves the problem and then try max is the maximum number of iterations that you specify for your nmds so uh, remember, this is a random start seed, so we're going to set seed to 20 here just to ensure reproducibility. You can choose any number. Okay, then we do our ordination, and that ran quickly, and you'll see it runs um, through the iterations, and then it tells us solution reached. So if we have a look at that object, can see we've got two dimensions so we specified k is equal to distance is bray curtis and our stress is 0 0.07 so that's fine we discussed um, up to 0 0.1 as a fair um, stress to to work with and we can also look at the stress plots for that object and that gives us a relationship between our observed similarity and our ordination distance. So what you're looking for here is kind of a linear relationship like this um, with a good linear fit value. So if you see something that's radically off of this pattern, then you know maybe it's not the best um, representation of your input matrix of pairwise distances. And then you can also use the goodness function and that gives you kind of a value for each of your samples um, of how how well they are represented and the lower this value for each sample the better okay so now we've got this ordination saved in this ord.bc object and now we can try and actually plot that so we're going to use the plot ordination function for that and then we're just going to add some some color and shape parameters so we can select um, just as we did before we can color by treatment and have shape as our different dogs uh, we can add a specific title with our parameters that we used so let's run this and then again, this is a ggplot function. You can, so you can see you add the different ggplot layers here. You can select your font size, whether it's bold or not, even your legend size. Uh, so you guys can play around with this just to familiarize yourself with ggplot functionality because that is really the um, most commonly used plotting function in R now, and it's also the most um, customizable. So if we now have a look at this MDS.1 object, we should see our plot. And there you go, we can see um, the different dogs. So the triangles will be our dog G. Here we've got dog K 
and here we've got dog B. So we still see that the dogs, and different dog samples for a given dog are most similar to each other and that we don't really from this see any clustering by treatment. So it doesn't have, look like treatment has that much of an effect on these dog microbiomes. So we've got the plot here. So one option is to export from here, um, but you can also use the PDF function where you name your plot, you pick the size of your plots in width and height, and that'll write to your project directory. We can also have a look at what would happen if we used unmerged ASVs in this case, instead of our merged ASVs to calculate beta diversity. So we're just going to specify our m.standard phyloseq object here and the rest of the parameters remain the same. So if we run that, we'll see it runs the iterations, but then it tells us um, that you may have insufficient data and that it couldn't find a solution. So it has no convergence. So here, if you look at the stress plot, just to show you an example of uh, what a stress plot shouldn't look like. So here we've got this kind of artifact effect where we see there's not a good relationship between our observed dissimilarity and our actual ordination distance. So let's see what happens if we do k is equal to 3. So in this case, we still don't get any convergence. So here, it's really better for us to, to work on this biologically relevant um, ASVs that have been collapsed down to their lowest available taxonomic level. Had you instead used um, unifract distance here, which includes the phylogenetic information, this would have been a different story, uh, as then you don't have the case where we discussed that you have several ASVs um, that have the same species level annotation, but that are considered as separate entities by the algorithm. Okay. So next we're going to move on to heat maps. Heat maps are a really fun visual way to explore your data. Um, and often you'll detect patterns in your heat map and that'll be your first clue as to what relationships you want to explore in your data with regards to specific factors of interest. So here's an example of a heat map I generated for a study I was working on. And at the bottom we've got our samples and on the side here we've got our OTUs or taxa. And then what's really useful is that we have got for each sample We've got labels here at the top that are specific factors of interest. So for our dog study, that would be either the dog's identity or the treatment that we're working on. So the dog identity might be one row and then the treatment would be another. So in this case, we were able to spot specific patterns where if you perform unsupervised clustering, so here the columns have been clustered in an unsupervised manner, and we can see that really these samples that are labeled as BB positive strongly cluster together and then that corresponds to specific taxa of interest. So if we look at the different colors in this heat map, the red would correspond to taxa that are highly abundant and the blue to taxa that are only present at really low levels or absent at the lowest level. And here we've just logged to transform the data to make it easier to visualize on this heat map here. Otherwise, if you have certain um, really high abundance ASVs, it makes it a bit harder to, to visualize on a nice color scale like we have here. Okay, so let's try and make our own heat map with the dog microbiome data. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to specify the file name, uh, the title for our plot, and the color specifications for our column annotations. So this heatmap.k function is the one that we're going to be using, and you can find that in this microbiome custom function script. So let's just have a look at what it looks like. Uh, if we look at the function, 
you can see from around line 109, uh, it describes the arguments that we need. So the phyloseq object is our input. And then there are a number of parameters that we can specify. Some of them have default values. Uh, some of them you have to specify. You can, for instance, subset your data either by rows or columns. So you choose specific OTUs or samples that you want to plot. And then what's very useful is you can also specify columns of interest that you want to add as an annotation track to the top of your heat map. And then for those uh, annotated tracks, you can choose specific colors. So certain color specification lists here. And then we can also choose to either order our samples or um, perform hierarchical clustering. So the default for the A heat map function that you find in the NMF package is to perform Euclidean based hierarchical clustering. So you can choose both the distance and the clustering function. But as we've discussed, this is not ideal for our type, type of 16S data. So instead, we're going to use Bray Curtis distance to calculate our sample order and then manually specify this to the function. So this is the, the actual heatmap.k function with the parameter specifications. You'll see a lot of them have default values and it's, you don't have to know the detail here. You can have a look if you're interested, but basically we're going to just prepare our OTU table, log to transform the data. We're going to get the annotation that we're interested in, add the colors that we want. And then when you move to the bottom here, you can actually see the a heat map function from the NMF package um, that this function is built around. So let's see if we can have a good example here. So if we've specified our file name, our title, the colors, so you can see the colors you specify. So you have dog B, G and K. So these um, hash um, codes here are all our colors. So you can choose your own colors and it's specified as a named list. So if we look at, uh, have a look at that colors, you'll see we have dog B, G and K, each with an associated color. So then we want to create a pairwise distance matrix with Bray Curtis distance. And we can use the distance function for that from the phyloseq package. So that'll give you that pairwise matrix. And then we're going to pass this distance matrix onto the H cluster function. So that will actually do your hierarchical clustering and give you your sample order. So that's from the stats package, hierarchical cluster analysis on a set of dissimilarities and methods for analyzing it. So if we do H cluster, we can extract the sample order um, from that object by saying class.res dollar order. So there we can see we've got 15 um, numbers here, and that specifies the sample order for the hierarchical clustering uh, that we'll pass on to our function. Okay, so our heat map we can start building now. We specify our phyloseq object. This is the annotation columns. So in our case, we only have two, so we're going to specify um, columns one and two, the dog and the treatment. Um, and then main, that's our title, our file name, our colors for our annotation track that we defined up here. Um, this is the size of your text for the for your rows, so that we the taxa. And then call v, that is your column order. Uh, and here we specify sample.order. So that is what we determined here with our clustering. And we tell it, yes, we do want um, taxonomic annotation. So you can run that function. It tells you it's including all samples, all OTUs. And you can ignore the NA messages. And then it should create this plot here for you in the window, uh, as well as save it to file.